Today I woke up at 4 a.m. and drove three hours to Chattanooga for something that my job begged me to do. By the time I got there, it apparently had already been done because somebody wanted to save me the trip. So to say this Nintendo Direct quite literally made my day is really setting the bar a little bit low since I was already having a crappy day. I really enjoy the Direct. So today let's talk about this Direct and some of the highlights and some of the midpoints through. Hello world and all who inhabit it, it is I, the Great Say Rain, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Nintendo Direct Mini and what I personally loved about it and some of the things I could care less about. But before we do that, be sure to like and subscribe as that supports the channel. Also comment down below what was your favorite announcement at this Nintendo Direct. First off, we have Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. This DLC add-on looks beautiful, it looks amazing. It honestly looks like a completely different game. I mean, it's a $40 expansion, so it's almost the price of a full-fledged game. So Monster Hunter fans are eating, it's beautiful, I love it. I will never play it. I have nothing against Monster Hunter, I just never got into it and so, I keep sending it on sale i may cop it and just you know dive into it but as of right now i have no intentions of playing this game my year is already packed out with different games that I have to try play complete stream all this other stuff next was near automata or automata i don't know everyone says it differently this is one of those games where i played it before but i love to play it again on switch my only concern is that it will have performance issues because the switch isn't exactly a powerhouse but i think near is about five years old at this point so it should run just fine but I don't know. I'm fairly certain that I'm gonna pick this game up, but I'm really looking out for performance reviews as I don't wanna be disappointed if this game is stuck at 30 FPS or worse, lower. Next up, we have Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. Next up, we have Super Bomberman R2. Super Bomberman R has a terrible reputation on Switch for being a trash game. I played it free on Stadia and I thought it was pretty all right. I don't know if I wanted a second game without there being some sort of change as to what this game is and how it plays. I just don't think that Super Bomberman R has the really big team of people behind it that they want championing this game. I think that Konami is just putting something out, which is fine because we don't get a lot of things from Konami nowadays. It's just weird out of all the IPs that Konami has, Bomberman is the one they decided to put a new entry for in 2022. Next up, we have Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. I love these games. There were three games as a kid that I played nonstop on my GBA. I always rotated through Dragon Ball Z and the Legacy of Goku series, especially Boost Fury, Pokemon, and any in all Mega Man Battle Network games that I can get my hands on. I am beyond excited about these games. I was just thinking recently how they should really re-release those old GBA games because they are really, really fun. It's hard to explain what this game is. It's like a strategy RPG, but there's action to it and you really control the flow of battle. Kind of like an ATB system before ATB systems were as popular as they are now. I really think you should play it. I'm buying this physically and I do not buy physical games. If you look behind me, uh, we have Metroid Dread and Pokemon Let's Go. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go is a gift, like somebody gave that to me and forgot they gave it to me, aka I borrowed it and never returned it. And then Metro Dread was an accident. I wanted the digital, but GameStop ended up giving me the physical when I pre-ordered. Uh, and also, Age of Calamity is a game I forgot to give back. They are releasing this game weirdly. They're doing a volume one and a volume two, and I don't know the pricing or anything yet because this game actually comes out in 2023. Mega Man, like Pokemon, has split releases. So how Pokemon had Fire Red and Leaf Green, with Mega Man you had like Red Sun and Blue Moon. So I thought they were going gonna do one two three four and five and just have half the games on one volume and the other half on the other volume but no they're doing the earlier releases on one volume and the later releases on the other volume it doesn't matter to me how they release these games i'm buying both of them physically i do not care i love these games anytime i try to do a gba emulator on my iphone or or android always play Mega Man battle network because i love these games so please give them a try because i want another entry. after that we saw pac-man world repack which is basically a remaster of pac-man world and that's actually coming out very soon that's coming out august 26 and i'm excited to play it there's no official price release at least from nintendo's website so maybe there's somewhere else i haven't checked but i'm guessing this will be a 40 or 50 dollar game i doubt that they'd ask for a full 60 for this remaster but it's bandai namco so they might Next up, we have Return to Monkey Island. Now, I am not a fan of the point and click genre, but I know a lot of people are, and this game was a part of a lot of people's childhood. I don't really have a super powerful PC that we use for games. If we used our PC at all, it was for like Googling stuff or maybe for homework, but I know a lot of people are excited about this game, so definitely gonna mention it, and I hope that you guys enjoy that this is coming to Switch later on this year. Next up is Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, a sequel to Kingdom Battle, a game that I did a video on because I just so happened to randomly purchase it when it was on a super sale and ended up falling in love. So I'm actually extremely excited about this Sparks of Hope title. They made some gameplay differences, I believe Bowser's in it, and instead of you like 
picking a tile and going to it and it being more of a linear focus movement style they're actually allowing you to run around and have free range inside of the game and go wherever you want to go and hit your moves attack enemies do everything but once you fire your weapon you have to stay where you ubisoft is actually giving this game its own showcase so i will be tuning in for that though i might not report on it because i don't think it's going to be that big of a deal i'm just curious personally to see what this game is looking like speaking of what it looks like it looks beautiful i want to see more gameplay because the trailer was kind of weird with the pew pews that she had in there and all the weird things she said but i think the game is going to be fun i'm excited for it this game did leak a whole day before so unfortunately some of the hype got taken away from me but we already knew this game was coming out we just didn't know when and of course it looks beautiful so i'll be tuning in for that live showcase tomorrow next up we have little noah sign of paradise now this game looks just like a mobile game made for the app store or the google play store and was ported to the switch I actually couldn't find the original game, so I don't think that's the case. I think this actually is an original game for the Switch, but it just looks so mobile-esque, so gotcha-like. There's different characters you can cycle through, and everything about this screams free-to-play, gotcha, pour money into me. But it is $15 on the eShop, and I believe it's out right now. It actually describes itself as a casual road like action game with little miniature characters you can use as allies throughout the game, which is where I kind of got confused and thought there, there was a gotcha mechanic, but apparently there isn't. I don't know, the game looks fun, so I might try it. It's only 15 bucks. Next up was Rail Grade. Choo choo. This is hilarious. I'm reading the blurb from Polygon and it says, this is Roller Coaster Tycoon, but trains. <laughs> After that, we saw RPG Time The Legend of Right. This game is already out on PC and Xbox Series X, so it's really interesting that it's coming to Switch because I don't really think I would think to see a game that comes out on those two platforms and then go to Switch, but whatever. Next up, we had Sonic Frontiers, which was hilarious because this showing of the game actually looked better than all the other showings of the game. And I have a theory. I have a theory that every version that we've seen that IGN has shown was actually played on the Switch. It wasn't played on PS5, it wasn't played on PC, it was played on the Switch because this trailer looks similar to all the other trailers as far as visual effects and pop-ins and things like that. So I'm, I'm really confused as to what Sega's been doing with the marketing of this game, but I'm excited to play it. This trailer looks great. They showed off this new bonus stage called Cyberspace that looked like traditional linear Sonic levels and that part looked really, really good. So I'm excited for Sonic Frontiers. We still don't have a release date. I really want it to come out this year, but if they have to delay it, I'm not going to be mad at that. Next up is Disney Dreamlike Valley, which also looks like a free to play game. It's this life sim with Disney characters and you're building up this village and blah, 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 blah. I am not interested in life sims, but there is a life sim later on in the showcase that we saw that really piqued my interest. Skipping over that, we have Live Alive, which has a demo out today. Now we already know about Live Alive. It is a beautiful RPG that came out originally for the Famicom, is redone in an HD 2D type art style that we've actually been falling in love with as a community. It looks great. I have haven't played the demo yet because I came home and I immediately want to make this video. But yeah, that's an instant cop for me. I always had plans to grab this game and just having a demo who saves transfer over to the main game just makes it even better. After that, we had Doramon Story of Seasons, clearly a farming sim. We got another trailer from Minecraft Legends. We originally saw this game in the Xbox showcase. Then there was Dragon Quest Treasures, which actually looks pretty good. I wanted Dragon Quest to make a more action RPG spinoff. And I guess this is as close as we're gonna get. This is an action RPG spinoff, but you're not really controlling a character with the action you're controlling the monsters and it's more strategy and auto combat in there but you're also using the monsters to get to different places and collect treasure and then at the end of the level or at the end of the day or however they want to do it you take the treasures you've collected and you see how much they cost and the more money they're worth the more money you earn and you win it's dragon quest it's coming out this year you can't really be too mad at it then we have portal it's really weird that portal hasn't been on switch already but here it is it's coming out you get portal one and portal two and a co-op version of portal 2 all in one little package and that's releasing today i believe I th yeah yeah it's out today it's actually it was a shadow drop so it's out today go play it square enix has been on a roll there's this new game harvestella that they're releasing that actually looks pretty good it starts off as a life sim but then transitions into an action rpg and it looks really really good especially be coming out on the switch with this type of art style i'm very interested i want to see what the reviews are like and i want to see more about how it plays because i don't like farming sims i don't like life sims 
games my life is a simulation i don't need to play a simulation i'd rather play some action rpg things and some things that kind of put me in a fantasy world instead of me reliving the world i already live in if that makes sense but if that's your thing you can expect it november 4th last we have one of the best announcements in the presentation it doesn't top mega man though and that is persona 5 coming to switch this year and it's not a cloud version persona 5 royal persona 4 golden and persona 3 portable are all coming to switch similarly like they were announced at the xbox showcase we got the date for persona 5 which is october 21st but we got no other information for persona 4 golden or persona 3 portable i'm not gonna replay persona i played through a good chunk of it i haven't even finished it on playstation I love the game, but I can't possibly bring myself to go through that 100 hour RPG all over again. I'm really excited about the people who waited and wanted to come to Switch. Great for you. I am not gonna play it again, but this is awesome. I'm super excited and it's just great to see more games come to Switch. Also, I haven't played Persona 4 and I haven't played Persona 3, so I have the opportunity to play those games on the Switch. And with it being in a more portable form factor, I can play these games more easily in the bed, on the couch. I don't have to be sitting here at my desk to play these games, so they're a little bit more attractive in that portable format. But yeah, that was pretty much it. It was a pretty great direct, if I do say so myself. But let me know what you think down below. What was your favorite announcement from this direct? Did this direct hit all the buttons and check all the checks that it needed to check for you? Or were you a negative Nancy? and hated everything about this direct thank you guys so much for watching be sure to check out my other videos like my review of kingdom battle if you're interested in that series or check out my most recent video where i talk about apple arcade and three games are a guarantee to get you to sign up for the service today thanks again for watching peace